12 years old, yes. and now you're 21. Yes. What is the difference? What is the biggest difference? Oh my goodness. Um, Besides age, obviously. Right, right. Um, I've definitely learned a lot. You know, I've seen a lot more. Um, I've become more wise and I know a bit more about myself than I did when I was 12. You know, you're still developing and a lot of things are still new to you. Um, so yeah. So what's the biggest difference? Um, the biggest what, what you said you learned about yourself, you've yeah. gotten wiser, you know more about the music industry. What does that mean? Um, well, you know, at 12, you're still kind of coming into who you are. And I mean, because I you think still the biggest are. difference in age is right. from 10 to 20. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. that's when you, you, you're That's a developmental a, phase. Right, right. From a child to a full on adult. Mm -hmm. 20 to 30, you're an adult. 30 right. to 40, you're an adult. Mm -hmm. But from 10, to 20, like that's a big difference. It's wild. Yeah. It's wild. Um, so what's one thing? What's just one thing that you think is different about you? Literally, specifically? I, I've literally discovered like who I am as a, as a person. Um, as, as a child, you know, it was a lot of influences and a lot of times you just want to make the people around you happy mm. and you just want to, you know, be great, um, but now it's kind of like, hey, Caitlin, do you like what you just did? Do you like this record? Are you happy with this? Yeah, I'm happy with this. Okay, then, girl, let's do it. You know, it's, it's kind of okay. like... So now it's more yeah. about Caitlin, kind of yeah. like Janet Jackson when she did her Control album, <laughs> right? Yes, <laughs> like, yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So if, if it's all about Caitlin and what you like and um, how you view your own music. What exactly is your aura, your vibe? What do you like? Um, the one thing that has followed me since mm -hmm. I was a child, a, a 12 year old, um, was definitely honesty. I wanted to be authentic in my music. Um, and at that time I really, I, I was still looking for a sound. I was still looking mm -hmm. for, you know, what it is that I wanted to talk about, but I knew that I wanted it to be something that the honestly truth. and truthfully came from me. Yeah. And that's why it was so important for me to write my music, because I was like, who better to tell my story than, than mm -hmm. me? So, but at 21, do you have a story? What's the story? <laughs> tell me the 12. story, Kate. <laughs> what is the story at 12? Look, I've seen a lot. All what, right. what have you seen? <laughs> um, you know, my, my story is in a heart-wrenching one that yeah, you don't you know, have I like a down on my life because your mom and dad were together right yeah mm -hmm, and, and your dad was a producer yes and who did he produce um he produced for a couple people joe back in the day he gives me the spiel every now and then but you know i kind of i kind of tap out sometimes <laughs> <laughs> you said you don't like hearing his, his i tap his, out sometimes he's still my dad wise tales. he's still my dad you know but he, he's got a he's joe is a pretty big man. deal though mm -hmm. have you met joe um i've talked to him a few times yeah yeah do you like his music at all? Of course. Everything of course. Like, well, my dad is like, the producer. Status, 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 status. <laughs> yeah, he's got, he's got a couple of jammies. Yeah, yeah, he does. Yeah. So how did you meet Mary J. Blige? How did she, like, happen up on you so, at the age of 12? Um, do you remember that moment? I do, actually. So it was just, a, like, a chance thing, right place at the right time. Was um, it because your father was a producer? It's a, it, so the way that it happened was my dad when I was about 10 or 11 years old, took me to New Jersey, introduced me to uh, this woman who would later become my manager. And in that moment, we were at an office. She saw someone she knew. And he was like, yeah, she's dope. Yeah, you could just send her up to the office. Yeah, I think so-and-so is in there. Yeah, go ahead and send her up there. And so I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's about to happen. I'm like, oh, OK, I'm just going to go into a meeting, see another mm -hmm. person, you know. OK. And I go up in there, and I'm like, Oh, wait, this is Mary J. Blige. Oh, so you knew who she was? I knew who she was. I didn't know she was going to be in there. <laughs> but um, I was so caught off guard, and we ended up just talking and, you know, vibing out. And um, eventually they were like, hey, what are you guys looking for? We're like a record deal. And did you have like, to well, sing you for me. her, or did you just I did. talk to her? I did. I sang uh, Saving All My Love, and I'm going down. Okay. And I had prepared I'm going down. Just like, just to have a song prepared, just in case somebody asked me to sing. 
I do and that too. And it just so <laughs> I have stuff. I'm not a singer. Wait, you do that too? I'm a, I, yeah, yeah I, I'm awesome. an actress. So I have like these monologues oh, absolutely. in my mind. Yeah. So if I run into like a director or something, absolutely. I just break out Stop, in a monologue. Sir, watch this right, monologue. right, right, right. I like, understand completely. I could do Shakespeare, I could do, you know, drama, comedy, what you need. I got it. I got it. <laughs> so I feel you on that, girl. I, I understand. Feel you. Completely. So, you, so your your preparation was I'm going down. I'm going down. And it just so happened that she was in there, you know, and I'm singing her song, and I'm like, girl, look at God. To, I'm trying to mask my nervousness, <laughs> but like, I'm singing, I'm going down. Just like, kind of looking at her, like, you this is your song, and I'm singing it for you. Um, but yeah, well, it, it ain't really, really her song, so you would have sang it well. This, it belonged to Rolls Royce. Okay. But <laughs> so you, you probably you know, would have done remake. it better than her. Remake. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Would you do that song? Would you put that song on your album if you? I've never thought about it, but you know, it, it's a good idea. Standing back, I give you your props. Well, I'm saying it's kind of like you know, like you had. It, it's got a nice story behind it. Right. That's why I'm like, that's right. A good I've story. never thought about it, but interesting. And Rolls Royce needs a little change to... too. <laughs> Look, I'm trying to get somebody else paid <laughs> off of you. <laughs> you know, hey, you gotta do what you gotta do. But you you do have to do what you have to do sometimes. <laughs> uh, so, Caitlin. Yes. You used to say all the time, I'm going to be a star because my dad is a producer. How's that working for you, girl? <laughs> I definitely did say that. I remember specifically being in first grade, like, yeah, my daddy is a producer. I'm going to be famous one day. I'm going to be so famous. Um, I mean, it's working out pretty nicely. I think so. <laughs> I think so. Um, definitely. It's, it's been a lot of hard work. We've, we've put in a lot of time. Um, and just the developing of the the music, the voice. I will tell anybody who asks, my dad can't sing a lick, but he taught me how to sing. That's all because, right. you know, he was helping to craft and to shape me and, you know, help me manipulate my he voice. He was your Matthew Knowles. He, <laughs> <laughs> what was that look? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. You know, here's my Derek, you know? Okay. Here's my Derek. Um, but, yeah, it, it was, it, it's been a journey. Yeah. And I talk about, I'm, uh, I'm talking about me being an actress and having monologues prepared, but you yourself are an, a, quite an accomplished actress, <laughs> graduating from the Cicely Tyson School of Theater. <laughs> Where is that? <laughs> it's in um, East Orange, New Jersey. New Jersey. Yeah, in New Jersey. Okay. Oh, I loved it there. Um, Cicely came through a couple times. I was like, oh. Shut oh, up. You met did. Cicely Tyson? You know, it was in passing. It was just <laughs> like a, she was walking across the stage. I'm like, oh. That's I don't Cicely. care. I feel like if Cicely Tyson passed by, you would get a breeze of yes, greatness. You did. And all of a sudden, your acting yeah. would just become that's 100% how it happened. level that's how, higher. That's exactly how it happened. Is that how it is? That's exactly yeah, how that's, it happened. It's like, you know, without Cicely Tyson, you're like, wherefore art thou, Romeo? And then Cicely, Cicely. passes by, where for art thou, Romeo? Yes. Like, you that get is, it. That's you know. exactly what happened. Yeah, yeah, you Absolutely. feel Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the, the experience at the school uh, was definitely fun. I met a couple of my best friends there that I'm still like, really close to. Um, yeah, I had a, a really, really fun experience. There. What did you learn from, from, like, do they teach you about Cicely Tyson? Like, do they have a Cicely Tyson class? <laughs> They don't teach you specifically I'm about I'm just saying, Cicely. if you went to Cicely Tyson School of Acting, no. you should have a history class um, about Cicely Tyson. Maybe, maybe they have. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't think I probably was in school You don't think that you took day. that? Well, um, okay. But, um, no, the, the curriculum is really focused around, you know, everything else that everyone else learns in school, but just with the, the arts included, mm -hmm. you know, the acting programs, the film, the uh, music, choir. I was in choir, of course. Uh, did my first play there, Color Purple. I was one of the church ladies. Um, and it was, it was really, it was really fun. So did you sing and act in it? In Color in the Purple? Color Purple? Yeah. 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 Because see, every black acting school got the same black plays <laughs> that they do. They do August Dream Wilson. Uh, well, okay, Dream Girls. Yeah, you name Porgy them. Mess. Yeah, Porky and Bess, uh, <laughs> Color, Purple, Color Purple, The Wiz. Did y'all do The Wiz? Um, I believe they. I don't. I think they did The Wiz. Somebody said something there. else. <laughs> I wasn't there that that time. 
for color girls. Did you do for color girls? No. You do for color yeah, girls for who have girls. considered suicide when the rainbow is enough into Jackie Shange. I don't know. If okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they can do that. That is the movie. Nice Tyler cool. Perry turned it into a movie. Mm -hmm. Janet Jackson played in it, actually. Wow. But yeah, look up that. It's got some great monologues. Okay. Not that you need any because now you're on television for real, for real. <laughs> American Soul, That's right? That's funny, yeah. On uh, BET? Yes. Um, we just, or season two was finished up, and uh, I believe it's coming out this April. Around, or actually May, excuse me, May 15th, I believe. So tell us how that about. crept up on you. So um, my manager sent me the audition for uh, the role of Simone, and I was like, oh my goodness, this is perfect. She sings, she dances, she's an actor, you know. I'm like, you know what, let me just, let me just send in a cell tape. Let's see how this goes. And, uh, you know, a few weeks later, Boom. they called me like, hey, uh, they want you for the role. And I'm like, oh my gosh, this is crazy. Sounds fantastic. Let me call my mom. Was it everything or is it everything that you ever dreamed of being able to be on a television show? It, I mean, everything and more. We've all become like so close. Mm -hmm. It's such a family environment. Um, I love the producers. I love my co-stars. Uh, the crew on the set, like we're all really tight and it's, it's been a joy. You really. know I Antha? I know Ayantha. Say, tell Ayantha, Tammy Max said, what's up? Ayantha. Tammy <laughs> Max said, what's up, Ayantha? Hey. When, when you on set, girl. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I love Ayantha. She is like, she's the breeze, too. Oh, she, Ayantha yeah. is definitely yeah, a breeze. Yeah, she was passing. Her. I've worked with her on a few shows, on, on a couple you, of shows. Ayantha. But Ayantha plays uh, Tessa on American Soul, yes. just to let people know. Yes. So I want to know, and I asked this question, not to be like Barbara Walters or anything, mm. but I want to know where you think you'll be 48 hours from today. 48 hours? Yeah, in terms of what you plan in your career, what you plan in your life, 48 hours from today, what do you think you'll be doing? Um, in the literal standpoint? However you want to answer the question. Um, from the literal standpoint, I know I have a couple of meetings and all in, in studio sessions to go to, but from the metaphoric, you know, where do you see yourself <laughs> in the future uh, standpoint? I, I, no, I literally meant 48 hours. Though. Oh, okay. So yeah, um, I my schedule, my routine is literally wake up, go to the gym, you work out, um, and then you go to your sessions, your meetings, and literally every day I'm So who you have meetings focusing. with in 48 hours? Who you meeting with? A lot of people. I set up, I set the schedule up between me and my dad and my managers, we are Who's like. Who's one person you meeting with? I'm just curious. Um, there's an artist named Jimmy Cravity who I plan on uh, having a studio session with. Mm -hmm. um, and there are, you know, this, like I said, oh, so I gonna, set up the. So I, you'll, be, you'll be singing in the studio with Jimmy? Yeah. In, in the next 48 hours? Mm-hmm. Cool. I wish I was in that session because his name sounds dope. He is dope. <laughs> He's amazing. He's amazing. Um, yeah, I, when I go in the studio, it's always with the intention to create dope stuff. And the reason I ask like 48 hours is because a lot of times when people see themselves in the future, they see it in one year or five years or 10 years, but it's the future, it's the immediate future that gets you to the five years. Mm -hmm. So what you're doing today is gonna be predicated on what happens in five years right. or four years, or what you're doing in the next 48 hours is directly related to what you'll be doing in the next five years. Exactly. And, and so that's why I ask, because I don't wanna pretend like the future is only five years from the day when the future is like in the next 60 seconds. Oh, absolutely. You get me? I love that. You and feeling me? Yes, and, and that's why I think it's important that um, you, you have your, your goals clear in your head every day from the moment you wake up so that you're always prepared for those 48 hours or that you're always working toward them. Yeah, and it sounds like hours. you're going to be singing in the next five years, Look, 10 years, 15 years, because you're going to be doing it in 48 hours. You just got finished doing it in 30 minutes ago. So Jimmy ain't the only one with a great name. Kayla Nicole got one too, baby. So give it up. Thank you so you much did. for sharing uh, your talents with <laughs> Thank us, Ms. You. Kayla. Thank you. What happened is I'm a Jamaican, born in Jamaica, grew up in Jamaica and migrated to New York City. So for dancehall artists who live in the state, it's always said that it's impossible to break. So when I got older and I started going to, I used to go to parties at a young age, like 16, 15. Sorry, mommy, but yeah. I, used to I was going to parties at 12. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I was up in there. I yeah. was up in there. So while lie. I was sneaking out and stuff like that, it just, I just always had this whole, this vision that I wanted to be one of the first to like break from the stage that's representing dance and music. And it happened. Okay. So, yeah.
Well, well, why do you say you you wanted to be one of the first that it happened? Were, because you weren't technically the first, Cranium. Right? I mean, technically, from from to be honest with you, because the way the record came about is like, it's like hundred percent done in New York. Like the producer is Jamaican, but but is an American. Me as a as a Jamaican live in the city. So everything was like from New York, which has never really happened. It's always like. The producers are from like Jamaica, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? It's just never really like a full length dance or record, I think, that actually break from the steel, just being like all 100% New York. So oh, I feel like okay. So it was it, like it was produced and. It was produced, mixed, mastered, everything. All in New, New York, York City. kids, everything New York, you know what I mean? And I just wanted to represent and just, that's what I stand for though. When, when, it's, when it's all said and done, I just want to be remembered as a kid who had the guts to like, you know what I mean, stay and represent the music for other artists who's coming in the business that you don't have to always run back. You can yeah. just stay yeah, and just be talented and just trust, just trust the process. Trust the process. Yeah. That's the hard part, I think, is trusting the process. Very hard. Why do you think trusting the process is so hard, though? Like for me, it was very hard because when I get my first record, which nobody else to know, it took me like I think like two years to get the next record. So it, during during that process, a lot of people don't understand that. You don't mean after this record? Huh? Yeah, it took like two uh, years. After nobody has to know, yeah, it took you two years to do another record. To find the next big record. To and find the next big record. Yeah. But you had done records in between. Correct. Okay. But, but not necessarily. The thing is, like, when you're doing dance or music, right? It we 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 always have this thing called the core, which is the 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 the, the um the base of it, like the the heart, the streets. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So for me. When the record came out, I knew what I had. I knew I had a goal in my hand. So right. it took me a time to like get it on national radio and get it on like mainstream radio. So it took like two years to work that record. The song came out 2013 and went on radio 2015. Mm. So it took three years for us to break that record. So when but I what, said process, mean like I had, I had to take the nose and it's not gonna work. And yeah. you know what I mean? But I just humble myself and just make it work. Because a lot of people, they'll have a record mm -hmm. and they'll think it's hot and you know, it might actually be hot. Yeah. But a lot of times they're like, this record's not working. They toss it to the side, go yeah. back in the studios and start from scratch. Exactly. What made you not do that? Because I just knew what I had. I like, I just knew this record, I, I just knew it was a special record. And you see the thing as an artist, like I was still an upcoming artist too, that's a part of the game. Like you have to trust your team and trust, ma trust your management. Because sometimes we get carried away because we are, we are emotional. Mm -hmm, Artists yeah. get really mm -hmm. emotional about their stuff. So like for me, I feel like the fact that I had two great managers who were like, yo, just relax, don't worry about it, it's gonna work, you know what I mean? But at the end of the day, I just knew. You, you know when you know you have something yeah. like a goal, I just felt like yeah. this is gonna be the big <laughs> record, so. I stick it out till we sell the goal, so. But now, prior to, prior to nobody has to know, mm -hmm. you, Streamed at least fifty-two million. No, I had no that record. Was after yeah, it was after. After nobody that. has to yeah. know. Because it just blew up internationally. Like just start blowing up from Africa, blew up in the UK, blew up in Australia, and just blew up. All and up. so, because that blew up, you you begin to get the streams. Exactly. I started to I, I started to create a fan base of just like people, just like yo, who's this kid? All across the yeah. the world. Because a lot of people knew the record but didn't know how I looked. Like I was right. like, oh no, but I didn't. They're like, care. is that Shaggy? Yeah. <laughs> I got some new shit out. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, it's me. But I didn't, I didn't care. I just, I, it, it, for me, honestly, like, I say this all the time, for me, I'm very passionate about music, mm -hmm. especially dance and music, because I feel like we influence so much sound that we never really get the true recognition that we deserved. Mm -hmm. So for me, I'm just a walking symbol of just representing the music as much as possible. So do you, they like that. They like yeah. it. Do you enjoy R and B, hip hop, uh, little country, little yeah. jazz? Yeah, because my sound is my sound. Remember, we are all influenced by our environment. So being a New York kid, R and B is like you know something we listen to all the time. My favorite artist is Sam Cooke. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So I grew up around that music and I love R and B. What's your Sam Cooke song? I like Bring It Home to Me. Oh. I love I love um, Change Gonna Come. Mm -hmm. I love the Chainsaw Man. Did you see the Sam Cooke documentary? It's crazy. I didn't. I couldn't even watch it off. I'd be honest. It's it hurt, crazy. It, it bothers me a lot. So I didn't. I, honestly, I didn't even finish it. You I didn't like, finish it. You know what? I stopped. I stopped when he was in the, the restaurant. Oh, so you stopped before he died? Before he died, and then I found out that it was managers, his girls, something like. I was like, it's crazy. Yeah. I love Sam Cooke on a different level. Like that's because I grew up in a Christian home, uh -huh. so it was like I don't have much choices. I can't listen to no. Other bangarangs. That's what they call it. My grandmother called it bangarangs. Yeah, what he, like, what he, she call it what? I'm like, not from Jamaica. It's like him. bangarangs. is basically like bullshit. Not not necessarily bullshit, but more like 
the bagger, the bugger, bugger, scandal. Bugger. Yeah, the scandal. Rumors, and, vulgar. Too vulgar. That's the word. Too vulgar. Yeah. Too. Oh, word. it was too vulgar was for too you. Vulgar. So I used to sneak out to get it. Ah. Uh, and I did get it. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. my music now is my God. She's. She, so is that a, a part of why your music is dance hall and fun and light and? Well, my music is very raw. It's very raunchy. It's very raw. I was gonna say nobody has to know. That's yeah. kind of dirty. It's not saying dirty. It's because it's <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is. I'm, I live That's this, a little sneaky now, Graham. Because I live this singlish life. Because I'm, <laughs> I'm singlish. That's how I look at it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but so. you singlish. Singlish. Yeah. <laughs> but sound like you down with OPP. <laughs> <laughs> if nobody has to know. Yeah, I'm just. I'm just a free spirit guy who just. I just. I just. You know what I mean? I just live and I just say things that some people are scared to say. I think in music, I just, I'm very raunchy. I'm very raw. Very raw. Very, very raw. How are you raunchy with a grandmother like that? I know. That's what I'm saying. When she called me sometimes, she said, I hear this song, you know, and I, I can't believe it's you. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, yo, we hear that from, then the guys are playing it downstairs. I was like, oh my God. Yeah. She used to call me and curse me before. Like, call me and like cursed. Like, she couldn't believe it. Because I grew up in a, in a church and everything. So for her, it's right. like, Jesus Christ, you know? Oh, oh God. What is it like growing up? I, I'm, I'm from America. Yeah. And I know what it's like to be raised in a Christian American home. Mm -hmm. What is it like to be raised in a Christian Jamaican home? Clean church every week. Yeah? They're very strict. Like, and what I love about my grandmother is, and I, and I salute her for that, because, like, she never sheltered me in the sense of, like, I was exposed to go to different churches. I wasn't like, I didn't have to go to her church. That's what I love about her. I say it all the time. She don't care. Uh -huh. Just no, make sure on Sunday you're in a as church. As long as you go. Yeah, that, that was her. So I used to go with my friends to church and you know, it was the, 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 the kids in the back. Uh -huh. but, in Jamaica, but in Jamaica, it's different because I feel like in Jamaica, once you go to a church, it's like everybody's a mother and everybody's a dad. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. So you're still under, you're still under rules and regulations. So in church, I'm like, <laughs> what? And you know, you have the attitude, and then you're like, and then we just have to go to the front of the church to get the prayer. I get so much prayer when I was young. Maybe yeah. that's where I'm at, where I'm at, because Jesus Christ, everybody pray for me. <laughs> so, I you, think that's what it is. You have two crosses on your ears. Yes. So, does that mean you still love the Lord? Yeah, I do. I see, I even about, I even about, Jesus? What's your religion situation yeah, today? For, for me, to be honest with you, man, I just feel like. I just believe in 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 in, in a um, higher being. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I believe. I don't like to um to specify what right. really I believe in. I just feel like just believe in something, mm -hmm. no matter what it is. I feel like every human on this earth have their own rights to choose what religion they want to be. So yeah. I could date a girl who have a different um religion. aspect. Or, you know what I mean? Thoughts. You, you and could date. I a could hundred percent because okay. I, I don't need to cross part with that. It's just right. you believe what you believe in. I believe what I believe in. Right. So we you could you could date someone who was Buddhist or someone 100%. who was Jewish or. Yeah, we all are here to share the space on earth until our time come. So oh. there's no need for. See, that's what's wrong with you Jamaican men. Y'all always saying something slick and sly, and make a woman <laughs> want to drop their panties. <laughs> that's not cool. That's not cool. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what I think. It is. Um, you, you, you. T speaking of dropping panties, yeah. You sent out a tweet that you didn't think would get so much flack, but it did when you went off to Africa. Oh, so basically, what happened was. Um, I have this, the next thing I'm about to perform is called In Charge. Mm -hmm. And in the hook, he said, um, I just wanna. You can say it. Okay, I just wanna fuck. Uh -huh. I don't wanna fall in love. So, yeah, so I said, okay, yeah, I'm in Ghana for a week, December, and the truth is, I just wanna fuck, I don't wanna fall in love. No, the song title that I'm working, that's the title of the song, it's In Charge, uh -huh. but everybody think I, I meant I was going to go there and just do it. And start fucking all the Africans. Yeah, I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, Jesus. I was like, Jesus, no. You know what I mean? like, no, I can't even keep it up that long. I mean, it's not everybody. <laughs> yeah, everybody, I mean, maybe one and two, but I mean, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. But so it was I, cool. I, what, what was, what, what did you do? Like, how did you? I didn't say nothing. Nothing? Yeah, yeah, you, how did you come back the backlash of it all? I, I didn't care. To, to be honest, I, I, the thing is, like, I feel like we live in, in such a society where everybody's so sensitive. And, mm -hmm. it's, and, it's, and it's, as long as I didn't say anything that disrespect a group or, or that disrespect a, a specific, like, belief, right. I don't care, mm -hmm. to be honest. Because I, in my heart, I didn't, 
say anything bad. So for you to clear it up, that means it's on your conscience. It's not on my conscience. I didn't say anything bad, so it is what it is. Right. And I went there and I put on a good show. And I did bring a couple girls. So the people stage. did come to the show? Yeah, it was packed. It was like, what, 20,000 people? <laughs> yeah, we enjoy ourselves. Um, <laughs> nobody has to know. Yeah. Uh, I fucked all the Africans. Um, <laughs> nah, nah. Nah. Um, do Jamaicans have an issue with Drake? Because Drake, in I guess uh, some of his music, tries to go for that Jamaican accent. If it's, they like more of me, like if I like. Him. Okay. Do you like him? Oh yeah, hundred percent. So you're good with him? Yeah. I feel. Like, I don't think there's no problem with him, man. I feel like, listen, people have to understand that our artist's job is to be artistic. So if I get up tomorrow morning and I feel like I want to sing a country song, I'm going to sing it. Who's going to stop me from singing a country song? That's how I feel. Right. You know what I mean? This is, this is our job. This is our job, and our job is to be artistic. I'm, I understand where people coming from where it's like, oh, you're taking this or am I taking that. If I'm influenced by the song, you can't. What are you going to do? You're going to kill me for singing something that I like? You can't. You know what is I mean? this just a like a Jamaican attitude? Y'all are so <laughs> carefree and, <laughs> and so like... Oh, the world is love, love, amour, and, yeah. and we it's are loving, so... We are loving people, no problem, man. It's always been... That's what I'm saying, no man. problem, man. It's always been like, is that you all the time? Like, yeah. do you ever get mad? Do you I ever... Do is get is mad. there ever a problem, man? Yeah, we get... <laughs> 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 the thing is, you don't want us to get upset. That's the thing, though. Ah, you know I mean? you don't okay, want us to get okay. Mad. But we are loving people. We are very loving, charming people. We, 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 like to, we, we like to have fun. We like to party. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We like to just be ourselves. But as far as like, those stuff are like simple stuff, man. Those stuff is like, you know what I mean? If a man want to go and create music, let him go and create music. You know uh -huh. what I'm saying? I sing a lot of hooks that's like R&B and stuff like that. So I'm the worst person to talk in that situation. So either, either, um, <laughs> either dispel the myth of the Jamaican man or make it true mm -hmm. that you guys have a lot of jobs. What jobs did you have <laughs> before you started with your dance hall music? You have a lot of jobs? Yeah. Uh, really? Uh, well, I mean, I, I don't know. I used I, to work at, my favorite, I could tell you my favorite job. Okay. I used to work at McDonald's oh. in, in, um, in JFK Airport. And the reason I love that job because it, it taught me a lot about So it. you're like coming to America. Co oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's perfectly it. But what I love about working at McDonald's in, in JFK is that it taught me a lot of different people's personality. There's some crazy people in this world, and then there's some nice people, and then there's some people that just everything bothers them. I remember one lady came one time and she ordered like French fries, and it was like the fries is finished. I was like, okay, give us like five minutes. And like two minutes she came back and she's like, where's my French fries? Like, Miss, it's just hard. Like, I just punch it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then she just start go off. And then there's people who, they just chill, you know what I mean? They just calm. And then I get right. to learn different races and different people and different countries and see different character. So for me, it was a perfect build-up for this job because I have to deal with a lot of people on a daily basis. So it was yeah. like, I already get all of that training. Who wants hot fries the most, black people or white people? Hot fries, that's a good question. Yeah. I think both. Both? Yeah, because yeah, I get mad when my fries but, from McDonald's not hot. Yeah. They have the best hot fries. You can agree with that, right? Um, honestly? No? What they put in them fries? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? What they put in them fries? Uh, salt. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, we like, you know, we love salt. <laughs> yeah, but I used to love that job. It was, it was very good, man. It taught me a lot of, taught me a lot of stuff. You, you enjoyed it? I enjoyed it. That's, that's a blessing to be able to do something that you enjoy. Yeah. And it's sad that the world uh, would have people think less of people because they worked at a job like McDonald's or yeah. Target or Walmart when there are people who genuinely love what they do, yeah. where they are. And if you're happy, like, what's the deal? Like, that's, that's it. I mean, really? Why do you, you call yourself cranium? Because I have a big head. <laughs> nobody has to know. Nobody has nah. to know. So the reason why I come to the Hey, that's why he fucks all the women in Africa! <laughs> well, honestly, the, the reason why was um, a friend of mine um, was in the studio and he was really shocked and how I actually came up with music. Off the top of my head, I never wrote a song in my life. I always just freestyled every record. Oh, oh okay, so that I makes sense. Because I was freestyling yeah. the record, he was like, "Oh my God, this guy is good." And he had it was spelled with C R A, uh -huh. and I took the C off because my real name is Kemar, so I just put the put K. Put the K. Cranium, and he's a standout. He's just so cool. Like if you see him, like what? Your new album, Midnight Sparks. Midnight Sparks. Where can we get it? Um, on all digital platform. Okay, can you give us something from it? 
100%. Let's do that. Let's do that. Cranium, everybody!